My name is Hamed Saragi. I was born and raised in Tehran, one of the biggest cities in the Middle East. And I fell in love with Persian classical music when I was 12 and 13 by listening to radio stations playing lots of Persian classical and folk music. And I heard this beautiful instrument on the radio for the first time and asked my mom if she can buy me one. She was um, a bit surprised, but she liked the idea and she bought me one and I didn't stop playing since then. It's called the, the tar, T-A-R, and tar in Persian means string. It has six strings on the, on the instrument and it comes in three pairs. And they're all made of um, steel, but we, we used to use catgut strings before. The body is made of walnut tree or mulberry sometimes. And the, the body dries over time and it, and it sounds sharper over time. The, the neck is quite long. It has sheep's bone, the, the, the white bit on the, on the neck. And the frets are made of goat's guts and they're movable. You can, you can change the distance between the, the, the frets based on your preference or the scale you're playing. I use a pick which is made of brass and a kind of soft material around the brass that you can hold the pick easier. I recently found a very beautiful description like from a non-Middle Eastern point of view. <laughs> it says it looks like two hearts upside down kissing each other which was so beautiful. So the Persian classical music is, is based on a very rich repertoire called Radif, which is basically a collection of melodies that have been passed on to, to us through the last generations, through an oral tradition. I, I kind of learned this repertoire the same way, so I went to a lot of classes seeing a lot of different masters and teachers, spent a lot of time with them. And I learned it this way, which was amazing because I don't, I don't think if I forget a chance again to go back and learn, because it kind of, you need to, and just go with the flow for, for many, many years and then learn this language, which is very simple, but very complicated. So I did it. Um, and then at the same time, I went to take a lot of academic lessons, learning the, the harmony, a music theory of the Eastern classical music and Western harmony and counterpoint and stuff like that. And I think I, think I came up with something that I end up making my own music after a while. So I fell in love with this with this master, Ali Akbar Khan Shahnazi. He he was my hero back then because the, the way he played the instrument was um, full of techniques and he was a bit fast but at the same time very rich. So I fell in love with his way of playing and I started writing and transcribing all his works. And then I realized that his granddaughter is still alive and she has a lot of his grandfather's recordings that she gave them to me and I started transcribing them. And then at the end I had a, a book. And amazingly the, the, the book has been used by many students and unis around the country. I think I can call myself a multi-instrumentalist. I'm really interested in plucked string instruments and that's my area and a lot of Iranian Middle Eastern instruments are plucked strings whether you use a fingernail or a, a pick that interests me for some reason. My main instrument is the tar but also 
I play a lot, a lot of Middle Eastern string plucked instruments, like the setar, which is a smaller version of this instrument, the saz, the tambour, which is from the west of Iran, the dotar, which is normally from the east of Iran, the bass instrument oud, which is very common in the, the whole Middle East and in South of Europe. I play all these instruments, but I my main instrument is the the the, the tar. I was always interested in finding a common ground, a a language through music that I can speak to everyone, and I think that's why. That's part of the reason why I went to Malaysia to experience something new for the first time. And I started sound engineering, experimenting a lot of different colors of music and why they sound different. And I think the older I got, I found myself fallen in love with fusion and mainly jazz and that was when I was about to move to Australia. I moved here, I found the right people. I started hanging with them. I had no idea how to play their music. They had no idea how to play my music. But we understood how to listen carefully and how to contribute. And then I think after a while we we found the language and I felt very happy that I could finally communicate with a lot of people with musical or non-musical backgrounds and say my things. I've been living in Australia for, for eight years and I go back to Iran at least once a year. When I go back to Iran, I feel a bit disconnected because I'm not living there anymore everything is everything's changed and when I come back here I'm still I'm not an Australian fully Australian I know I'm a foreigner so I think they the, the only place that I feel very comfortable is when I'm in an airplane that belongs to nowhere basically and no one can claim the sky is theirs it's just for no one I have that feeling when I when I'm playing music basically that I I'm I'm not on a particular country I am just nowhere it's, it belongs to to me and I think through music I have been sort of able to give this authenticity to, to my audiences <laughs> <laughs> 